In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a really simple defense that can basically, I think, in a lot of ways, uh, make it really difficult for the offense to move. And again, it's very, very, very simple. Now, this comes to us out of the 3-3 Cub defense. And the reason why I wanted to teach this out of the 3-3 Cub defense that's on the 46 playbook is because it is the best alignment that you can get for the adjustments that we're going to want to make. Also, for the most popular metas that you're going to be facing, new trips, bunch, trips formations. This is a really, really, really simple defense, but it's also something that I think is super, super effective. Now, how are we gonna teach, or how are we gonna set this up? We're in the 46 playbook, and if you wanna get my full nickel 3-3 cup defense, we expand on the principle that I'm gonna teach you in this video a ton, and we teach you how to literally lock down everything on the defensive side of the ball, we teach you a lot of tips on how to stop getting agged down the field, as well as probably what I would argue is one of the better blitzing concepts um, in the game. So if you want to check all that stuff out, the link is in the description down below. So um, I want to show you kind of the problem and then we'll work toward the solution. So the problem is basically this. If I come out in Bunch, which Bunch is the most popular offense this year, again, um, it would be Bunch or Tight, it, it, it's kind of irrelevant. But if I use this verticals play, let's say that I come out in the play uh, cover one robber. What you'll notice is if I snap the ball, I can throw this wheel to the right and you see that this is gonna be open. Now there's a couple ways to combat this, okay? The, the, one of the main ways that you can actually combat this is if you manually back off that receiver, I think this actually plays fairly decent. You'll see here, I'm gonna snap throw it. He's gonna tackle him. Now it does oftentimes create that tackle battle where you need to be kind of aware of that. However, the problem is there's so much other stuff that is also open when you do this. So if I was to back this guy off, um, right? If I was to back this guy off, let's say he runs a corner. Well, he runs a corner route. I don't have any rewrite ability on the jam, and so it can be kind of hard. I actually played it very well right there, but it can be kind of hard um, you know, to stop a corner route or a post or something like that. So the other big problem with this game is the fact that ags are so central um, on the offensive side of the ball. So literally just motion this guy out in a streak, and I'm just going to basically high ball. You know, and a lot of times I'm going to be able to catch that. Now, again, let me show you just a little bit better of a variation of this. Um, we're going to actually snap him while he's in motion. So snap him right here so he's moving so there's no jam. High ball up and out, and you can do that. And you can do that literally all the way up and down the field. And the main problem is the fact of where the DB is at, right? We defend ags better off of jam. Like, I can't throw that ag because he's behind him. So this is why people like to run shaded underneath man coverage out of two men under. So if I run shaded underneath coverage, right, and I try to do that motion snap, you'll see right here that by and large, because he's underneath him, he's able to be in position to swat the ball or at least make a play. Uh, moreover, if I'm in this cover two man, it doesn't even matter if he's pressed. If I, I try to throw this wheel route, it's not open. It's going to be an interception. Shaded underneath man coverage, I think, is one of the best ways to, is probably the best way to play man coverage this year. Um, ironically, in the beginning of the year, we were talking about how bad it was. However, the biggest piece of the shaded underneath man coverage that is really important, it's really good if you press, and it's really bad if you don't. Let me show you what I mean. So I am in, um, I'm in cover two man, okay? Uh, let me back this guy up on the left, and then let me just say that I want to put this guy in the middle third to try to stop a skinny post. Okay, what you'll see is he'll go so far down that it leaves a wide open touchdown over the top, as you can see. Okay, so that's kind of a big piece of this. Now, the other problem, in my opinion, is the tight end, especially in a nickel formation. Whether it be nickel or, do or dollar, it is irrelevant. If I streak the tight end, and let me just clear this out a little bit. I'm going to motion this guy out. I'm going to streak the tight end. Uh, we'll just get this guy out of the way and then we'll you know do something like this but just watch the tight end watch this linebacker try to cover the tight end because he's not actually pressing him watch what happens 
you'll see he gets behind the tight end, and that's a safety, a pretty good safety at that, and you see that I can throw that over the top, especially if, let's say, I have to put this guy in a purple to go guard, you know, whatever, to go guard, like, the wheel or, you know, whatever, go guard a corner, um, you know, that's a standard adjustment people will make, and so this tight end streak becomes one of the biggest problems because, again, it's the same basic concept, Okay. So how do you fix this? Well, really the fix for this comes with alignment. And this is why 3-3 Cub is so good. So what you're gonna see is we're just gonna audible into the Mike Blitz Zero. The reason we're gonna audible into Mike Blitz Zero is because it's the best aligned play that has man coverage. They don't have a cover two man. If they had a cover two man or even a cover one robber, we would wanna be in that, okay? So we're gonna go into Mike Blitz O. Now, if you look at the placement of the linebacker, the major difference is Gardner Johnson would be the guy that would be manned up on him if this was 3-3 normal. Now it's going to be a linebacker that is literally right next to him or right over the top of him. So when I shade underneath, I don't have to have anybody over the top, which we'll show that here. And what you'll see is it's going to be hard for me to get over the top. You see he doesn't take that false step because of where he's at and he's able to actually be there. Now, what I would recommend if you were gonna actually do this is to get linebackers with deep route KO. You can get Troy Palomalu there, and you can get um, you can get Troy Palomalu and Rod Woodson at the linebacker position, and they're gonna really play this very, very well, uh, as you can see. And what this does is it allows you from a, from a um, you know, defensive perspective, it gives you a lot of freedom. Because now what I can do defensively, if I can audible here, because I'm just manning these guys up on the tight end and the running back. We're going to send three. And then we can zone these safeties however we want to run them, right? However we want to run these safeties. So one of my favorite adjustments is to do something like this on the left side. And then on the right side, I like to just have somebody in a purple or basically just some simple way to stop the, um, the corner route. That's my biggest thing is like, I don't want them to be able to throw a corner to the right. So maybe I put my curl flats on 25 or whatever, right? And then what you're going to see is a standard man, standard, uh, man beating play that looks, you know, it could look something like this, for example. Let me go to, um, let me just create a bunch trail. So you see here, this is kind of a standard, uh, a standard man beating play with a little slant over the middle, right? What you'll see with this is now, because we shaded outside underneath, that corner route that was really cooking is going to be a bang bang play on the sideline. So you can put deep route KOs everywhere um, and play like this, and you can have a pretty decent little man coverage. Again, the shade underneath is the biggest key to this. And what allows 3 3 Cub to do it so well is the fact that we have really good alignment. And so it's going to be hard for them to just beat us off the rip, right? If that's a deep route KO right there, that's going to be bagged. Another way you could do this is you could put medium route KOs everywhere um, if you wanted to do something like that. And you could shade, again, outside and underneath is what I would recommend. And then these guys can be your interior defenders in deep halves, which actually will play a lot of stuff this year um, that they have never played before. You'll see here, play the crosser and all that. So that is why I think the 3-3 Cub allows and gives us a lot of powerful possibilities because we can now guard a tight end, um, you know, from any formation. So, like, let's say, let's say they go to tight, right? Let's say they go to tight. Same basic thing. So, if you look at this here, um, my linebacker on the right side is in much better position to guard the tight end than the safety is. So, I'm going to man him up onto that guy right there. Now, I can take that safety and throw him in man coverage on the running back. And then now what this affords me the luxury to be able to do is I can then drop zones however I want to. So, for example, one thing I might want to do is I might want to drop this guy in a third. Maybe I want to drop this guy in an inside third, right? I could do stuff like this um, because I can use those linebackers to man up on tight ends in key situations. So you see here I'm going to shade underneath, and that tight end is still going to – like he, he's going to beat me to the corner, but I'm still able to be in a pretty good position, Right. Um, you know, again, another one of my favorite defenses for tight. Let me show you that real quick. Um, if they want to run bench, one of my favorite defenses uh, is we're going to really capitalize on these linebackers. So we're going to man this linebacker up on tight end. We're going to shade underneath. 
And then we're not too worried about the running back. I can kind of help with that, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to take these safeties and man them up on the outside guys, and then we're going to outside third over here. So now you see that we're able to still get the shade underneath feel. And what you'll notice with this is even if they run a streak, um, you've got bracketed coverage pretty well. Uh, and you see how well this is going to handle uh, the corner routes out of this formation. You know, another way to do this, and, and, and this is also really good for bench because if they – um, if they streak the players, you know, they're not going to be as effective. So what you can also do is just say, okay, real simple. We're just going to deep half these two guys. We got everybody manned up across the board. This is kind of the base setup. And, you know, we're going to shed with three. And they have to keep the back end to block. If they don't, we're going to send five at them, and we can get really good pressure. But you see there the corner route's double teamed and completely bagged. So there's a lot more nuance that we can go into with this defense. But the, the core concept is this. Manning, having your linebackers on the line of scrimmage is really helpful for giving you the ability to quickly man them up on tight ends who can who are the primary player on the field that can actually beat shaded down man coverage. The tight end is the number one player that you need to watch out for when you're running a shade underneath man-to-man -man defense. If you can neutralize him with this 3-3 defense that I just showed you, you're going to have a lot of success defensively. So thanks for watching the video. If you want to learn more about this, make sure you get our 46 uh, or our 33 Cup defensive ebook. The way to get that is to sign up for our Patreon. It's only 10 bucks. If you want to sign up, head down to the description of the video and click the link down below.